all systems go. Clear the lift off. It's noon on a Monday in the Lord's time zone, and you know what that means. It's time to start talking golf. If you're one of those people that's like, man, I'm a little hungover from the Genesis and Tiger and all that. I need a break. Well, then you're not ready for this show because this is for sweaty tryhards who, as soon as the previous week is over, we're ready to get knee deep into the next week. That is what we do. We love PGA DFS around here. It is fucking fun. You take it. You bottle it up. You put it in my veins. If you feel the same, well, I encourage you to hang around for about the next hour because we're going to have some roo fun breaking down the Mexico is it Mexico open I don't even know what the fuck it's called but I know the players I know the course and I know how to play DFS and that's all you need what's up new guy my name's James better known as the degenerate 75 a former pro DFS player who's now just a professional shit talker here to help you get a little bit better at DFS I'm not going to do it with silly shit like picks and plays I'm going to try to help you with a little thing called the process I hope you enjoy it and I also hope that you realize if you've been following me for a long time, I'm doing shows on Ship It Now, and before you know it, they'll all be over here. So you need to go like right now. Like, subscribe. This is the key. Subscribe and turn on the notifications because, you know, sometimes these shows always aren't at the same time. Do that for me or you're going to miss my content. And I don't want you on Twitter being like, hey, DJ, why the hell ain't I being seeing your shows? Because you're not subscribed to Ship It. That's why, you mother father. Me and Tambo do this show every single Monday. I do a round four show right here on Ship It Saturday night at the conclusion of round three. And then I'm still doing the emergency stream, seven o'clock Wednesday night, Lord's time zone. Every Wednesday, still on my channel for a limited time. And round three, still on my channel, DJ75. But they're all coming over here. So you might as well get your ass over here. Get subscribed. Tell your friends. Make your wife subscribe. Get everybody in here. I know you guys love it. A long enough intro from the big guy. Let's see if I can do this transition here. Let me bring in a man who managed to not win the million dollars. He's going to have to just settle for 60000 this week. I hope he can make it ha- uh, make that survive. His name is Toe Tag and Tambo. How you doing, bro? I'm doing well. Yeah, it was an exciting first week. That was a great intro, breaking it all down. I'm excited. Like you said, bottle it up. As we always say, nobody cares. Work harder. We're on to the next one, Mexico Open. Going to break it all down for you guys, as always, going through the process, talking about some of the stuff. I know people are all excited for this pricing. We don't cheat. There was some spoiler alerts over in the Discord, so I heard that you know the tw- the tweets are out there. There's a 5K price range. We'll get to all that, but yeah, it was a one. Wait, did you say there's a 5K price range? Yeah, if you didn't Holy see those tweets, shit. yeah, I, I, I don't know how you did anything. Miss them. I yeah. want authentic reactions. I want to shit on on bad players being over ten thousand. So I make a point not to look. <laughs> I think that'll uh, be the easy part. I I just heard about that range though, but like you said, yeah, huge first week. I do want to say appreciate all the support out there. There was a ton of traction with bringing the merger over getting everything set up with the gen 75 community and the ship it community it was a huge first week who myself others won but it was all about the members if you saw the the tweet that went out earlier if you didn't go to at ship it nation on x and you can see that there was a ton of members that got the job done this week and oh it's only you guys up at the top no go look at that all kinds of members got the job done and everyone's happy the the stone one of the best tools i already knew this already but many and that's part of the deal we'll get it done but bringing that the, the tool the stone over for both classic slate and each of the showdown slates was a phenomenal starting point for everybody to get on board and check that out. The Discord was bumping every single day. It is right now for NASCAR, by the way, too. We got NASCAR on the go. Daytona 500 moved to today. So lots of good things going over on at ShipItNation.com. We'll get you that code here in a little bit. But James, excited to hop back in and be back with you here for the first look. Missed last week due to travel. Hey, here's my fancy schedule. Hold on. Let me see if I can blow it up. Look at the, look at this production value I got going on here. Oh, wrong screen. Hold on. I got to do it. Oh, look at that. I blew it up. This is that schedule I was telling you about. Once again, we're over here on the ship every Monday and Saturday and over on my station on Wednesday, Friday for the time being. So check that out. And I just want, I, I've had more than one person tell me this. Well, I'm excited that you and ship are teaming up, but like, I don't want to pay the extra price, bro. It's not an extra price. You're getting, you're getting Tambo hoop, all of the awesome people that ship it and me. And we lowered the price. If you were a member at my site, it's actually cheaper over there than it was on mine. And if you've never been a member, just go use this code DGEN15 and you will definitely get it for cheaper, right? 15% off any package. I will walk you through that later. Cause I know a lot of you are old and you're like, Hey man, just be happy. I'm on YouTube watching you. I get it. I'm going to show you how to use that code. It is. There's a ton of momentum coming over. If you can't see that there is something special going on at ship it right now, in the PGA streets, actually in all the streets,
athletes, but I'm really worried about PGA because, you know me, the big guy gets off the PGA, then you're blind as a bat, dude. By the way, make sure you're hitting that like. If we get up to 100 likes over here, the editor will be updating me in private chat. I will give you a ticket on me that we will build together uh, in the main contest this week, okay? All right, Tambo, you got any thoughts before we move on to the course breakdown? Uh, no, I think we're good. All right, you have to just sit there and listen to me spew this for a minute, okay? <laughs> We're not going to, we're not going to, there's plenty of course breakdowns out there. Plenty of people do good stuff. I'm just going to give you the highlights, things I'm going to be looking for. Uh, I, we build a model for all of our members over at Ship It Nation. So they have a model to reference. So if you're not one of those people, it's like, yeah, I see them data sites, but I don't know how to fucking make a model. I get it. I get it. I think a lot of the people that use data sites have no idea what they're doing, but you know, waste your money however you want. So I'm going to give you some things that you want to know about this course. First of all, this is a resort course. If you don't know about resort courses, they tend to be pretty easy because they're basically built for people going on fucking vacations, okay? They're not exactly grinder fest. So if you enjoyed watching some guys actually make bogeys last week, you can get that out of your mind because they ain't making many bogeys at this course, right? First of all, it is a course that is in Mexico. Yes, it is on the West Coast of Mexico over, uh, what, what is it by? I just looked it up over here on Wendy. It's over by, what is this? Uh, uh, Puerto Vallarta. There you go. That's my fancy Spanish for the week. And this course is a par 71. You're thinking, oh, so there's only three par fives. Nope. There's four par fives, but there's five par threes, thus making it a par 71. This course, if you just look at it, is very long for a par 71 being almost 7,500 yards is an extremely long course. But what you're going to find is like, it's, it's a bombs away course, right? There's just not a lot of ways to get in trouble at this course. You can absolutely bomb the shit out of it. Wide fairways. Yes, you are going to have a decent amount of long irons in you can see the most common shots for the seconds are 175 plus so there is going to be a lot of mid to long irons being hit in here but the thing is is like even when they miss there's not there's no punishment they have huge greens around here you have very soft pass palum greens which are super receptive and these guys even if they do manage to miss a green pass palum is notorious for being one of the easiest surfaces to get up and down so of course what am i going to be looking for this week well Long iron players, right? I think some long iron players who aren't long off the tee can get it done this week. But really, I think guys who just absolutely spray it off the tee and who can bomb it out there, I think are guys that you really want to consider this week. You know, hashtag cam champ, right? Those are guys that are, are going to have an advantage because they're going to probably be hitting short to mid irons in instead of long irons in, and it's easier to control those. Last thing I would tell you is pap Past Palum uh, greens tend to be notoriously slow, all right? And so with that, I really like shitty putters this week. My theory has always been, and I've never, everybody argues about this, and I'm just going to tell you my take, go with it or don't. If I have to choose a shitty putter, I would rather see him on slow greens than on fast greens, okay? It's just like uh, difficult courses. When a course gets difficult, I want better players. When a course is easier, I want more marginal players because that gap between them shrinks. Same principle applies here when it comes to putting. On tough courses that have tough putting conditions, better putters are going to see their strengths uh, exponentially better than the weaker players. So that's where I'm going. That is a course breakdown. That's all you get. Let's talk contests. Tambo, have you had a chance to look at these contests yet? Yeah, I just looked them up here because uh, I actually saw somebody say it here, and now I can't find it. Anyway, someone said bad contests for the small-time players, and I see a bunch. Like, there's the $8 three max, your classic baby, the $10 18. There's the, all the $5 single entries, the $12 single entries, $20 three max. I mean, 20 bucks and under. I still see a ton of great contests. And one interesting note, you and I talked pre-show on, I'll let you go into it, but the $20 is not the worst. Not the worst, Bob, as you would usually say. Let, let, let's hear your thoughts. So what do you got? Yeah, I mean, so first of all, the main lottery, anytime it's 20% or less the first, that's as good as you ever see the main lottery. And 100,000 is exactly 20% of 500,000. I don't know that I'm going to play in this because I don't typically play in the big lottery. But if I'm ever going to, this is the structure I would play in. This is not gross. Uh, I think the better play would probably be just come down here to the $5, right? Because it's only, uh, what is that, 12.5% to first, and you get a better payout structure throughout that top 10 definitely be max in the drive the green and for the people that you're talking about that are saying that the contests aren't that great that this week well first of all you got to remember i'm blocked out of a lot of them but i see the three dollar 20 max i see a, the six dollar uh t to green i see the five dollar single entry so i don't know if you're talking about like the quarter and 50 cent events maybe those are bad right. this week but the the ones that i would consider on the lower end look very uh well structured to me this week and i think for this being a quote-unquote off week for golf i think i think uh DraftKings spoiled us with really good contests yeah, and shout out to our guy, Billy. Uh, you know, he was awesome down in Phoenix taking care of us. Really appreciate that. And he always makes fun of me for not uh, giving the love to hockey, being the Canadian that I am. But uh, nothing wrong with the $5. $5 actually is great, like, like James was just saying. It's just we're getting a better $20 than we'll usually get. 
So it's kind of like one of those situations where if you ever were wanting to play it, at least this would be one you could consider with only 20% up top to first versus usually 35 or whatever it ends up being each each week when it's crazy. So much less of a lottery, but still very much so a lottery. That That's how we would look at it. Did you just click on his comment? You have the ability to click on comments and bring him up? You do too. But I know, but if you do it, we can agree you're way better at it than me. You can be the, the comment. Right. You you host the show. Okay. I stand here and just talk, and hey, then I'll find. You know, I love reading the comments throughout the let's show. Fucking go, Cam yes. Champ sucks. I'm not going to argue with that. All right, and he does suck until he doesn't. Until he doesn't. Important fact to remember, Andrew. All right. Uh, I, by the way, I'm not on here giving picks. I'm just giving you an example of a guy that I would normally never consider that I would be con- at least giving some consideration to this week. By and, and large. Signature. These 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 contests look pretty good. Signature hole. You get the fuck out of here. Uh, uh, let's just let hoop. Uh, uh, you know, victory lap winning that this past week. Yeah, that was good. Uh, and also, funny part about the picks and plays. Like, uh, if you one part you forgot in the breakdown is they've had the event at this course two years now. And if you just play Fino, Rogers, Champ, and Brandon Wu, and build your lineups with those guys starting in it, there's no way that you can lose because they've come top five or top ten every single year it's been played at this course, Not which it. is. The last two years. So make sure you set your lineups up that way. You'll be good. Nutted. Nutted. Uh, okay. I mean, I, I will tell you a, a strategy that not enough people consider, Tambo, especially on a week like this, where I think that it's going to be a little bit more chaotic. Really go make your stands in the 7Ks uh, and go find three guys in the 7Ks and legitimately play them in like 70% of your lineups, right? And then when you do that, then you go up top and you just go play 25, 30% of all the top end guys, knowing that those guys have incredible win equity uh, and, and get a little piece of all of them. And if you're three guys in the 7K to hit, it doesn't really matter what happens up top because you're going to have them mix the match with all those people, whereas almost everybody who builds lineups does it the exact opposite. They spend their time picking the top three up top and then they spray the 7Ks. And I think sometimes on a crazy week like this, inverting that strategy can be a really unique way to get different. Yeah, I'll also uh, segue that into another piece or just, you know, give a secondary thought on the same comments. It, someone mentioned earlier, shout out to our NASCAR content again, but, it, you know, NASCAR, Daytona 500, building with lots of salary left on the table. This is definitely an event you could do that because just because all these guys are priced up top and just because Fino, I get the, the Fino case, we'll get there in a second, but for the rest of them, they just have to be priced somewhere. There is definitely a, a possibility here where you have a Fino with, five seven k guys that still gets there and leaves five thousand on the table or whatever it might be and you can get away with that so just to give you an example like you can you can leave more money on the table they're all playing the same course they're all getting um you know the first two rounds so we'll go from there with the cut you still gotta have them make the cut but it doesn't mean someone's gonna be better just because they're priced 9k and above everybody has to have a price tag at the event that's that's the difference all right, let's go check out some quick weather real quick. Uh, as you can see, the weather, it's a its a coastal course right here. Uh, it's a lot like a lot of these resort courses. It's going to be on past Palm. It's going to, you know, probably you know, maybe get some ocean breezes. But as you can see, the early forecast doesn't look too bad. And if I know if I remember anything about this course, it is basically this. If it doesn't have any wind, it has no chance. There, go- This will be a straight up birdie fest if you do not get some gusts. Okay, this isn't a course that's going to get baked out in the afternoon. This isn't going to have those bumpy POAs. If it doesn't have any breeze, this course is going to probably play, I would guess, minus 22 to minus 24 winning score range, which is by definition a birdie fest. So we'll be monitoring this weather. It is only a Monday. Shit can change. Um, by the way, we're using uh, ECMF, which I believe stands for Eric Cole Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or every country makes weather forecasts. Remember that. Okay, let's get over to the pricing. I have not looked. I swear to goodness, I have not looked. Now that you told me that there's guys in the 5Ks, I've got to assume Tony Finau is going to be 12-5. I'm going to go 12-5. The moment of suspense is here. How much is Tony Finau? Oh, only 12,000. So 12,000 Tony Finau. Okay. Wait a second. Is my screen messing up, or does that really say Emiliano Grillo is 11-1? Yeah, I was waiting for that one. Yeah, I got the same view up on my screen right now, and I couldn't wait to to hear you respond to that one. Emiliano, wait, am I? Wait, wait, what? What am I missing here? What am I? I mean, I, I, look, I love Emiliano. I love him. A guy can hit a good long iron, which you're going to need a lot of this week. But 11,100 from Emiliano Grillo, who's kind of been spinning his wheels. Like, I mean, it, it, isn't Hogard like objectively a better player than Emiliano Grillo? Like both upside and just raw talent. If you turn the L's in his names to 11s and all the O's to zeros, you can spell his price with his name. <laughs> 11,100 is built right into his name. So obviously that's how they saw things at DraftKings and just put it together. But uh, it is insane. It, it's nuts to see. But you're going to say the same when you see Olsen right there. We're just staying 10K and above. I mean, I'm with you. Guard the hose. I like that play, but it, it doesn't get much better after that. I think Olsen just won on the DP World Tour, I believe. So I, I would have to go look that up again no. just to remember. I'm pretty sure he it just looks like won he, over there. 
I mean, it looks like he got third a while back. Uh, I mean, oh, wait, maybe they don't have the new stuff on here. He'll DK fear me. never updates, and I'm going to oh, go okay. double check now because I just Beer did Beer thing. That's how you say his name. For all of you that aren't aware, it's Beer Beer All right. Thunder Bear. 10,300. 10, Good to see he's out of prison. You love to see him beat the charges. Okay. So, uh, yeah, by the way, very Euro heavy. Dietrich. Uh, Thurbjörn and the Hogard all up here. Uh, and then you got Grio, which is just, I mean, right off the top. If, if Grio's 12% this week, I will like probably like eat my hat with a steak knife and a fork. I cannot believe he is priced at 11,100. Okay. Yeah. I mean, what's the narrative? He speaks Spanish and they're in Mexico. So like he's going to feel more at home. What the fuck are we talking about? <laughs> I, I did just go look it up though, just so you know. It was uh, Olsen won a couple weeks ago, and it was the event when uh, Nikolai was in the running at the event he was playing. His brother Rasmus was doing well in the event, ended up finishing second to Olsen. So he beat a different guy guarding the hose over there, his brother uh, Rasmus, Nikolai's brother, who's in this field, Nikolai Hogard up top at 10 7. So okay, I feel like it's important you know this. Uh, I live in America, and we don't even know that there's other countries, okay? Right. And the only, only reason we're even doing this Mexico nonsense this week is because the Americans are down there playing, all right? The PGA is down there, all right? America yeah. doesn't even know other countries exist. It was about the same field strength, it looks like. So we'll see. But yeah, that, that's just a note to have. All right. So up top, I mean, uh, I uh, Hoygard is about where he should be. I, I don't even mind Dietry up there. I, the fear beer illusion. I, 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 once again, d doesn't it feel like him and Grio are probably going to be the two pivots up here just because like, they're not going to like Grio's overpriced and people do not remember all fear beer. Yeah, yeah, I definitely would agree with that up top right away. It stands out. I guess the bigger conversation is around what to do with Finau. The chat asked earlier, early thoughts on ownership. I could easily see 38% or something ridiculous here because it is a twofold. It's what you talked about. Where, you know, people just, you know, uh, the Genesis hangover, whatever you want to call it, which brings a lazy event in. And then the secondary part of what I talked about is no matter what, you're pretty much going to have the money left over to be able to afford them, especially with this dynamic pricing. I doubt anyone in the 5K range is even playable. I'll have to go look. But when we get there, we'll see. The point would be you could still always afford a 12K guy. To, to James's point, the funniest part to me about them doing dynamic pricing without looking ahead and seeing who's down there is if you're going to do 5K, you should have done 12, 5 or 13. Like doing the same 12 and 11 eights that we've already always seen, it's close enough to 11 eights. It doesn't actually make that big of a difference to me. Like you should, it should be to put a 13K Tony Fina or a 12.5 Tony Fina, but to each their own is what it is. So just noting that, I think uh, Fina, Hogard, Dietry would be the guys that at least make sense versus the field strength up top here. And then I'm sure we'll find some guys in the 9K that make sense as well. Does Tony Fina justify 40% ownership with a guy? based on how he's been playing at $12,000. Because $12,000, even if there's 5K guys in this field, is still pretty price prohibitive, right? So does does he justify $12,000 with, like, I swear to God, him and, like, his putter is broken. His putter is just broken, broken. Yeah, what was the event we did this at recently? We just had this conversation, I think. It was maybe Scotty at one of them, where it was like, again, if you can find Scotty lineups, like, I definitely can't foresee myself lock buttoning Finau are playing 80% or something. So I guess if you are the, the lineups that you do go to with Finau, I would want to play with something extremely different, whether it's, you know, a couple thousand on the table or finding guys down low that you can get to. Like, I, I think you can build a lineup easily and get some lower owned guys down below. I'm going to be using the stone this week. I can tell you that for a fact to be able to go in and see who some of these high leverage plays, high upside guys are knowing that it's built around the actual tournament at stake. Like someone said this earlier too, was like, uh, every, you know, I forget what they said here. I got to do a better job remembering where they are, but Somebody said like this week feels like ass or something. And that's what, oh, here it is. But it's awesome. Lots of slander is what he was more so saying, Brian, saying what other people are thinking versus what you and I and many others are feeling. That's what we want. That's the edge. That's the advantage. It doesn't, not to say I've got the super edge. It's going to win you the Mexico Open. You don't know. That takes skill, luck, experience, putting it all together, the process, building it out, using the tools and things that we offer. No one can guarantee that you're going to win this week playing a tournament but going into the week, any given edge would be when others are doing what I always call a lazy week. You're going to see ownership congregate on certain plays in certain areas, and there's going to be a ton of great ways to get different and get, get different around them. Plus, there's showdown slates. Plus, there's other stuff. So there's just going to be a lot of stuff that we can do this week, and I love weeks like this. Most people want to sleep on this week. Ship it jumps on the opportunity. Cody knows. Show Cody gets it. And what Cody a last gets. name. Gamble. All right. Uh, yeah, hey, by the way, I see 200 people in here, only about 100 likes. That means we have roughly 100 donkey dicks. We don't, No donkey dicks allowed here, okay? 
Uh, all right, let's get to this next range because I got to tell you, three guys that instantly were in my head before I've looked at any modeling, before I've looked at anything, are right here. I mean, I don't even think it's that crazy to actually start my lineups with these three guys. Um, but uh, Let's see if you can guess my three guys that I love in this range that I was already thinking of. I didn't know if you were thinking of them to play them or, or yeah, not. Yeah, to play them. Uh, to play them. These are guys, yeah, if it's not play, that'd be obvious. Fucking loser piece of shit, Patrick Rogers. Double bogeys, 18 to miss the cut on the number, Patrick okay. Rogers. What about my guy, Steven Yeager? Then? Oh, of course. Yeager bombs? Oh, God, this course is meant for him. He's a resort course darling. What about Taylor Pendrith? Oh, yeah. Give him to, you know I got a Canadian fetish. You know I got one. And then the last one I think is either, you know, I, I just don't know if it would be woo because of that. So what about Mark Hubbard? Uh, you know, Mark Hubbard is a guy that I think can play at this course, but I like Keith Mitchell, man. Keith Mitchell can bomb away with impunity, right? And if there's no punishment for just absolutely smashing it, oh my God, Nick literally nailed all three he of them. He knows you. He knows yeah, you. He knows that's you. Exactly, those are the three guys that I was like, I'm playing those guys. And honestly, if I could be honest with you, I think Keith Mitchell's overpriced. There's no reason he should be ahead of Steven Yeager, right? I think, I think he's a little overpriced. Patrick Rogers is definitely fucking overpriced. Um, but uh, like, I think that's going to going to make Keith Mitchell all the more uh, playable because I bet he's only going to be like 10 or 11% because no one is going to play him when he is more expensive than Jaeger. Sad thing is now I think Jaeger is probably going to be like 25%. Yeah, I do think that Jaeger's always a popular guy anyway. Like people like to play him. So uh, people like to play him and Rogers. But what's interesting, again, just first look is I feel like a lot of people like Taylor Pendrith too. I did get a spoiler alert in the Discord earlier. Somebody mentioned that. So, um, and, and then our guy Rin, hashtag Shepard, he's always in the Discord. He goes, oh my, the $9,500 range has some absolute studs. And the exact guy at 9,500 is his dude, EVR. EVR might finally be playable because the field strength, but I don't know, his price now goes up with it. So you got to balance that as well. But I, I think you nailed it. I think you broke it down solid. I guess to me, James, like the, the setup here would be, Mackenzie Hughes down to Hubbard seems like it would go overlooked because yep. people will play Mitchell, Jagger, Rogers, Pendrith, probably, uh, you know, more Jagger and Rogers, but Pendrith up there too. So the bottom 9K range looks like where we could get some leverage here. I, I, th I think you're exactly right. EVR through Hubbard, that low 9,500 to 9,000. I would bet good money none of those guys get above 15%, which is a pretty bold proclamation because we know rule number one, people spend their salary. And so just inherently guys in the 9Ks get ownership, right? But I think that none of those guys are really fitting the prevailing narratives that are out there. Uh, and people just aren't comfortable paying that kind of salary for Brandon Wu, right? So like, I think that all these guys, if you like them, you should probably be pretty excited because I bet all of them are going to be lingering in like that 9 to 13% ownership range. And I mentioned Hubbard to try and get you to, to go with one of your three there, but I, I do like Hubbard, even if it is 9K. I kind of like that he's not best buy pricing, and I've heard a little Davis Thompson love oh. out there. We'll get to, beow, beow. That's our know, first donkey chalk warning. Yeah, and, and then don't forget about uh, don't sleep on. He's coming oh, up here, dude. Too. Jake Knapp's 8,700. I'm not sleeping on him. I'm playing. I was praying he was going to be like 8,200. I wanted him to be overpriced. When we were in Phoenix, the when we had our meetup, what was that? Just like a week ago, I remember watching him. I was like, this dude's a stud. Like, this guy's really good. Um, so yeah, this uh, Davis Thompson at 8,900. If you're thinking, ooh, I'm going to get sneaky and play 8,900, dude, he's going to be donkey chalk. If he's not 20% owned, I would be shocked. He will be super popular and he should be because he's a dude that's a great course fit. He can hit long irons and he absolutely smashes the ball off the tee. He's good on pass Powell. Well, he's never good at putting, but like he's less bad on pass Powell. Uh, so a lot to like here. Um, uh, uh, Doug Gim, I, I, I don't know. It, has Doug Gim been playing well this year? I see four out of 10 cuts made, but uh, that seems a little high. But uh, I, I am excited about Jake Knapp being overpriced. Oh, two gloves, Aaron Rye, but I don't see any rain in the forecast. So I don't love him. And no one's going to play Cam Champ at 8,600. Can we concur? I, I, I believe you're correct. This was what Capwise had to say about Gim, just of note there. 60 to 1 is fire. Long iron game is there. He's likable. We got to play guys that are likable, but he's maybe overlooked. I, I like the second part better, the latter of it, of being maybe overlooked at 8.8K. Uh, one quick note, though, I do got to interject here that you brought up about Davis Thompson. I was thinking, how would Davis Thompson get as popular as we might think? And then I remembered, maybe he does stay a little bit in check because if you like, you said a lot to like here, if you like, DJ and myself together. One guy that would make him popular is Pat Mayo. One guy, <laughs> that, one guy that's not doing his show this week is Pat Mayo because over on the Mayo Media Network this week, while he's away enjoying his vacation, which by the way, he texts me this morning, says he's doing a betting show probably from the beach. Like the dude just can't take a day off. So you absolutely love to see it, but hopefully having a great time. But DJ and myself will be doing the regular studio show, not in studio, obviously, but we will be doing the studio show of 
building some lineups, going back and forth, seeing where the field's going on Wednesday morning. I don't know if it's going to be recorded or live yet. We'll decide that probably off air, but just to, to get a feel for it, we'll get it out to you guys so that you know, but we're going to be doing that over on the Mayo Media Network this week. I'll try hosting it. DJ can be me on the show, the, the switch spots there, and he can come up with all the bullshit and, and make fun of me. And we'll go from there. That's usually what I do with Pat. So it should be a good show. Check that one out. If you guys like us together, that should be another version of the show that we can get out there this week for you guys, Wednesday, sometime morning or afternoon. Looking forward to it. Look, and you know, Pat show moves the needle so we can get on there and just be like, you got to play Doug Gim. He's likable. That'll be our, that can be our narrative we run with. How about this one? Should I put this on in the car so my kids can listen to uncle DJ and uncle Tambo is this, this should be safe. The F counter comes out on Wednesdays, right? Yeah, I've only I've only said two so far. We're pre- yeah, we're doing we're pretty good. good this far into the show. <laughs> and then and then BG BG Rice, I just fed mine so they would leave me alone. <laughs> get yeah, rid of those kids. kids. Perfect. Uh, all right, let's get down here to the lower eight case. Chuck Hoffman's kind of playing good golf. Like are we, you know, like I remember back in the day when I first started playing PGA DFS, you could always count on Chuck Hoffman to be like on the front page of the leaderboard Thursday and or Friday. And like, I, it almost feels like we're back there. I mean, he clearly did good at the waste management. He got off to a really roasty start at the Genesis. Of course, it didn't hold. But like, I, is Chuck Hoffman got, like going through a resurgence here? Because the Duke can hit long irons. And if this is going to be a long iron course, I don't mind old Chucky Hoffs. Yeah, he would make sense from that perspective for sure. And I wonder, um, just going back to that upper eight, if you've got Thompson and then Jake Knapp and Cam Champ's course history here, and if people are talking about Gim or liking what they see, we already saw it in the chat. I wonder if you see him go overlook because the next range is solid too, like Justin Su, Michael Kim, Mav McNeely, Eckroyd, all those guys can make birdies in bunches. I don't know if you want them all together in a lineup, but just to say it, I mean, there's definitely a range here of Hoffman down to Eckroyd where I could pick and play some of these guys within my builds and maybe even get after sort of balanced type build. This is guys that you could see sort of find their way to the top, make birdies throughout and go from there. So Hoffman would be a guy that fits it. We just saw him do well in Phoenix there, make it into the playoff where he ended up eventually losing, but still great run from him there. And then I think some of the guys just below him are interesting as well. And as a guy that, you know me, I get off to ownership. Oh, ownership. There is no range that week in and week out goes more overlooked than the low 8Ks. And it's largely because people like those upper 8K options quite frequently. And they also like the upper 7Ks. And when you do that, a one range that typically gets squeezed is the low 8K range. And looking at these salaries, I think that's going to be a case again this week. Because when you scroll right there to the upper 7Ks, I think there's some dudes that are going to be kind of popular. Like, you don't know this, but SH Kim secretly smashes the shit out of the ball, all right? Like he is going to be one that uh, I, I think is going to catch some steam this week. Is somebody that I'm definitely going to be warm to. I'm definitely going to be warm to Toasty. You see what I did there? Uh, this guy absolutely smashes it. Vince Norman smashes it. Jonathan Vegas smashes it. And if the prevailing narrative is going to be you have to smash it off the tee, then I think that some of these guys that maybe aren't the longest off the tee, like a Michael Kim, uh, are guys that uh, are going to get overlooked. And don't forget, Justin Suh is only good at two things. He can hit the ball far and he can putt. And if those are the only two things he has and he's going to be 7% owned this week, that could be a, a good enough reason to justify playing him. Yeah, I like that one. Could you confirm if this story is true? <clears throat> From Nick, he says, got my kid in trouble for calling kids at school mother fathers. So be careful. I actually had to meet with the teacher and my wife wasn't happy. That That's an incredible story, if true. Taking it, uh, taking the bit to a whole new level and just getting the job done. Do you know if that's true? It is true. Shaping the minds of the gen- of the next generation. That's what the big guy does. My God. Yeah, th- this next range, and then Rin says this too. I like this one. You can actually make a case that some of those low 8Ks could be swapped with the low 9Ks. You could fade Finau, get into a balance build. Yeah, I think there's definitely different ways that you can go about it here. And just seeing it early on, again, getting a first look, that is something that stood out to me right away. That's why I brought it up. People seem to like McNeely. So maybe he's the guy that gets sort of roped into this range as popular at 8,100. He is less than the average price over on DraftKings at 8,100. So I think that's another interesting point just to, to make here now. That's the upper 8K range. And then probably McNeely is where I would see people going early on. For sure. Can am I, the, the Chess and Hadley at 7,700 it seems a little overpriced. Like Chess and Hadley is better than Norman, Vegas, Cage Lee, Alex Smalley. Like, what are we talking about here, Bob? Jerry's, Jerry likes him. Shout out to Jerry Matt. Says Hadley I, mean that, hey, I agree with you, Jerry. Chess and Hadley does love a birdie fest. I'm just pointing out that he's overpriced. Like, he should be 7,200, even in this field. Like, there's just no way Hadley should be priced ahead of Norman Vegas, KH Lee, and Alex Smalley. Just, I, I can't do it, Bob. I mean, I can play him, and I might actually play him, but I'm going to play him because he is overpriced, and that's probably going to drive down his ownership because people love a good value in building their lineups. Yeah. I, I think that's, uh, you know, the, the interesting part, too, is just if you go back to the original thought process of Tony Finau 
up top and the price that he is. Like I said, if you play him and a bunch of guys down here, it's often going to be, you know, they're going to mix. You're going to see people mixing in the ones up top and then going down from there. I'm sure in the sixes, we must have some dudes that you can play. So uh, I, I think that's another thing to note. This bottom 7K range has some guys that we can get to as well. I think you're going to see Tony Fee now. And then I think a lot of people are going to come down here and grab these guys right here, right? Vegas, Smalley, uh, 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 Young. Like, there's mm -hmm. some really good players in this range, right? And it, it, you yeah. can easily put three of these guys in there and get Tony Fee now. And you really don't even feel like you're punting with your lineup. It still feels quote unquote safe, which, by the way, if you're playing GPPs and your lineup feels safe, you don't fucking get it, pal. So, uh, let's see any, I mean, like these are some good golfers. Like I think KH Lee doesn't fit the narrative, but like, if it's a birdie fest, I'm always open to KH Lee. Yeah. I like that call too. And one other note I was just looking at while you were pulling it up there, just the, there's, I, this might, might be the first time in a long time that I can remember this. There is more guys combined in the 8k and 9k range than the entire 7k range. Just the way the separation works. That's, so that's only, not something you ever see only 18 guys in the in the 7k range this week so yeah noting that as well just again for lineup composition if you want to call it that roster construction as a whole just we'll get we'll get after that in the slate plans and stuff we do over on, on ship it nation just to be able to show you guys how we're looking at that and how we think others are building it but again the nice part about this week with dj and myself hopping in on wednesday to do that show on the mail media network we will look at some lineup breakdowns and see where we think people are going with it start with the chalky build break it out from there ways to get different see where we're at when we have more information on ownership sweaty tryhard ownership that is from DJ now over at ship nation including his projections and ownership for all showdown slates as well and then of course we'll also be looking at it from uh, any other perspectives like if people are using fee now what does that look like if they go the balance route what does that look like so we'll we'll have more on ownership weather when we get to that point nobody else down here that really stands out off the top i saw people mentioning nate lashley I heard Johnny Vegas whispers last night before we even got pricing. People always seem to like Carson Young at events like this. So I think, you know, that could be something Scott Stallings ends up popping usually in projections on other projection sites. So I could see him getting up there. And then for whatever reason, people love JJ Spawn. I I'm one of those people in the past. So I don't know, maybe he'll get some ownership as well. And then I think Sam is he gonna is he going to spawn into a player that doesn't fucking suck? <laughs> spawn into a player. I, I don't know about that. That's the issue. And then someone said earlier in the chat, uh, did you see Bobby Mack at 7K? They said, talk me out of Bobby Mack chalk at 7K. What do you think about that one? Uh, I mean, here's, uh, first of all, let me, let me, I, let me go ahead and give this thought. I think the prevailing narrative this week is going to be, you got to play bombers, right? And there's only so many people who are going to fit that. I think there's two ways that like you can find guys who can have success at this course and are, could be good players at this course who are going to be lower owned. And they're this, right? Find the bombers that no one are talking about, right? Like Grayson Sig is a dude that absolutely mashes it. Sam Stevens absolutely mashes it. And I bet they are not going to get near the hype that some of these other bombers get, right? And the other one is like a guy like Bjork, right? A guy like KH Lee. They don't fit any narratives that are out there this week. But I'm telling you, we have seen both of these guys can get nuclear hot. And if this is going to be a resort course and it's going to turn into a putting contest, those guys can get as hot as anybody, right? So that I just want to put that out there before I forgot to say it, that those are two ways you could consider getting different. Go with guys who don't fit the quote unquote standard narrative or find guys that do fit the narrative that some, for whatever reason, aren't getting the steam back to Bobby Mack. I mean, a long-term talent. I think Bobby Mack is a much better player than most of these guys down here, but I, I just think that Bobby Mack's like kind of a grind it guy. I don't want him at a birdie fest. Is that, is that a bad take? It could be fine. I think actually that was what was funny is that people look at it from the talent perspective, but a lot of the tournaments that he was showing up in, in that were those majors grinded out types, us opens, things like that. So maybe it is more of a course setup versus that obviously talent wise, it's all there. Seven K is, you know, looking very cheap. I would, would take, I would take T dunks over Bobby Mack head to head this week. I, I just like T dunks at birdie fest more. Like, I don't think he's a better golfer. I just think T dunks, this is a better spot for him than it is for Bobby Mack. So like just playing the game, I would rather have T dunks over Bobby Mack. I, I don't always just go off. Who's the long-term more talented golfer. A lot of times I go with the guy who I think is better for the scoring environment. That's going to be there. Yeah, and one thing I will say about that, we got the course fit rankings. Our guy Lee Aldrich does over at Ship It Nation came over from a uh, formerly a fan share. I really like those rankings as well. Just another tool we have. And just saying it like that, I, I'm going to be curious to see how some of these guys rate out when he sets it up. Because last week, what got me could have been a much better week had I used Harris English as opposed to Bo Hostler, Dumpy Bo. Never again, Dumpy Bo. Maybe, maybe, maybe. But I, I say it like that was a setup where it ended up probably being a better setup of a course for Harris English. And that's what ended up happening. And Harris English. Ended up having the better week. Some other guys, Andrew says, got her up. You already brought up the bomber narrative. I do like Brock's call, though, 
and, and Andrew Novak, I think he's a, an interesting play as well. I want to see his betting number too. This is the type of field you could see somebody like him come through. So uh, yeah, not much else that I have here, but I think it was a good breakdown of that bottom range too. All right, 6,800, it, it saddens me. I was hoping Bramlett was going to be like 7,600 this week to maybe keep people off of him. But at 6,800, I'm going to tell you right now, Joseph Bramlett's going to get some steam. Uh, I, I think he has good course history here. I haven't got in. I haven't started doing all my uh, uh, research yet other than just the course. Uh, but jo Joseph Bramlett bombs it. Bombs it. Came 10th last year. Yeah, he missed yeah. the cut the first year. 10th last year, so. Uh, you know, here's a, this is another guy I'm talking about. Not a soul's going to play Harry Hall this week. All right. Harry Hall, where's the stupid little hat? Bryson wannabe. Uh, he's a short hitter, right? But I'm just telling you, a guy like him is a dude that if this turns into a putting contest, you want Harry Hall on your team. All right. If <laughs> this is just a straight up putting contest and minus 24 is the winner, Harry Hall will have a round of minus eight. I promise you. He always has one in him. So uh, that's just the way that like you can find these sleepers that don't fit the narrative out there that everybody's going to be pushing this week. But you got to remember at a resort course, there's it's not the U.S. Open, and the 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 difference between the the edge that the bombers have and these short hitters, it's 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 diminished because the short hitters a lot of times can putt a lot better. Uh, all right, who else? Oh, Gary Kigo at sixty seven hundred seem a little cheap to you. I was just going to say, we have to remind me on Wednesday, we have to build the Mayo special and it has to have Higo. It has to have Davis Thompson and it should have Michael Kim just because, you know, fan of the show was just on with, with Mayo there. The Michael Kim show is a good one. If you guys haven't checked it out. Definitely go and watch that. He broke down a lot of insight. Like he's been doing sort of in his threads over on X and things like that, where he'll actually go in behind the scenes or pull the curtain back a little bit. And I thought it was pretty interesting stuff that he was talking about with certain courses, green layouts, things like that. But yeah, maybe uh, remember he go for that 6,700 though. this would be the type of place that you would see him show up. So I think he's actually interesting here at that $6,700 price tag. Um, Del Sol, you, you talked about Eric Cole earlier, so you, Eric Solar, the, the guy, Del Solar, the, the guy that shot Del Soler, he shot the, I think, what was it? A 57 a couple weeks ago or something. Yeah, I saw I that. That's crazy. Yeah, so talk about he can, uh, get, he can get hot as the sun. You see what I did there? I did. So uh, it out. Garrick Higo, real quick. Is, if, if, if he gets any steam, tell me tell me if this is a bad take. If if we see that he's gonna be like 12% owned because he's honestly too talented to be at 6700, can I just fade him at week long and play him at showdown where he's actually good? Yeah, definitely. Like that call quite a bit. And again, that's what I'm saying. I do think again, you'll have the ownership. It's going to be the best. We'll have it covered. But that is where you're going to see. There is going to be some serious spots where guys are like 8 to 10% and everyone around them is 0. 0.5 or 1. And it's just, again, I know you're not playing in a vacuum. It's not a matchup bet where it has to be this person versus that person. But we're saying when you're seeing that, especially when you get down to these price tags, it becomes a little bit easier. But you even have a separate strategy for it in saying, not only that, I'm still going to play the dude. I'm just going to focus on it in showdown. Mm -hmm. uh, one more process piece, just because I think you brought this up pre-show. Maybe talk about this a little bit. Like, is this a slate where you tighten your pool or you spread it out with these five to six K range guys? You can talk to them from a couple different angles, but how are you treating this one? Oh, wait, were you asking me? I'm sorry. I was, uh, I was checking something on my phone. The no, editor was updating on likes. I'm sorry. You know, it's all good. We talked about this pre-show a little bit, so I'll let you take it. But he just talked about you, your player pool. You always do a great job explaining this of saying like, kind of letting your player pool dictate your contest oh, yeah, 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 selection yeah, yeah. And, and go ahead on that so like uh, like i was already looking this week at like what contest do i want to play and i don't think that's the question you should be asking yourself on a monday i think the question you should be asking yourself is how many players in this tournament are you interested in start starring all the players that you like right put a little note by them and if you find you like you're only finding like eight to ten guys well then maybe this is a good week for a single entry or a three max right go you know you play a hundred dollars a week we'll go get in the 33 dollars single entry and kind of do it that way right Whereas if I find myself starring 28 guys, which I got to tell you early in the week, I am finding myself starring a lot of guys in my head. It's probably a better week to play in the quote unquote lotteries where you can enter 150 lineups and have a player pool of 20, 25, maybe even 30 players. And then you can spread it out that way. I let the number of players that I'm interested in that week dictate the contest I play in, not the other way around. And it's just something that's always worked for me. Yeah, I like that quite a bit. And for a second part of his question, I know what he's saying, like the five to six K range is specifically wider. We just talked about it's a, a bigger range. The 7K range has shrunk down this week. Again, that, that's part of it. If you like a bunch of guys in here and you truly like them, then get after it. But I also talk about this the other way too, where it's not something where I want to get, let me get 3% of this guy because I heard he shot a 57 a couple weeks ago. All that ADDC guy, man, we've been waiting for him. Got to get my 3% of him. Oh, IndyCod. I heard someone mention him in the chat when I was watching DJ and Tambo on Monday. Better get 3%. Like, don't do that either. We're Indicott, talking about Indicott for showdown. You're welcome, everybody. 
Yeah, that, that's a good call too. So I think that's just the key to it all too. I would go down here, find some guys you're actually feeling and like, get your, your range of them, and then sort of narrow down your starring or your player pool size, then go pick your contest selection selection based off of that. Love all that. Putting it all together is what it's all about. Part of the process that we talk isn't, about often. Isn't Carl Yoon usually like 6,200 in really good fields, and now he's 6,200 in this field? What the hell is that all about? And can make birdies in bunches for sure. Yeah. Carl, Carl, Carl gets real hot. Wait, Matthew Neesmith at 6,200? Am I in like, wh what? Matthew yeah. Neesmith at 6,200? Like, he is objectively a better player than Parker Cootie and Chan Kim and Heisman. What, what did they, was somebody drunk? Like, did they have, what's going on here? I think it's just a, a product of what we've seen from him lately. Not good in Phoenix, miscut at the others. But some of those courses, a lot harder too. If you go back to sort of the easier courses, mishmash of results 30 top 35s and stuff but definitely think it's 6200 more than fair for his price here at, at this one 6200 lonto griffin at 6100 here's my narrative tell me if you're coming with me on it when i see the name lonto i think oh that's that sounds like a name from somebody from mexico is that a good enough narrative to play him uh, i guess but we actually know who he is so that would change it a little bit but i still think he's probably fine to be honest at don't, 6, you don't, you don't let facts worse. get in the way of a good narrative tambo all right i agree Narrative Street's always the best. That was the uh, the the narrative last week. Speaking of Mayo and all the, the you know the win this week and everything like that. Not in studio. Narrative lives on. He always you know it's always my best weeks when I don't go in studio and do the show. So good news, you and I are doing that show. But hashtag not in studio. So it could be another big week over at the Nation for us and for members and many others. So I'm excited for that as well. Uh, anybody else down here? Yeah, look, that you look like? at this guy. Does does Troy merit being in the five thousands? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, that, that seems a little low for Troy Merritt, who's actually a guy that I think kind of might've fixed his putting yips. Uh, so I don't, I don't, wait, wait, what's the rule? What's the Troy Merritt rule? Remember, yeah. I, I was going to tell you that this is the Troy Merritt flow chart. The discord was confusing it earlier. Is Troy Merritt in the field? Yes. Is Troy Merritt cheap? Yes. Is it a birdie fest? Yes. Play Troy Merritt. 5,900 bucks. We'll be in on Troy Merritt this week. The process right there. That's if people want to know a little bit about me and Tambo's process. That's it right there. He Easy. comes up with that. And then I have things like Lonto Griffin sounds like a Mexican name, right? See, we, we, you know, it's a very, it's a very, very uh, complex process. Uh, don't, don't go past 5,800. Oh, My wait, boy, Panda. Knows? Panda's uh, going to at 5,800 too. Norman yeah, John, Norman right? Brown, yeah, yeah. yeah. 5,800. Yeah. He can bomb it too, by the way. CT Pan's 5,700? The disrespect on CT Pan. Callum Terran, play that guy at Showdown. He will have... Callum Terran actually kind of might be a good fit here. At 5,600? And you know, here's I'm here. I just got to see something real quick, Tambo. If I like, let's just go back to that start I was talking about earlier. If I want to go Keith Mitchell, Jaeger, Pendrith to start out, and then I'm willing to come down here and like just toss in one Callum Terran, just one quote unquote punt at 5,600. Look, that lets me get all the way back up to the mid sevens with the rest of my lineup. Yeah. Right. I mean, like yeah. you can build some really good lineups if you're willing to stay away from the uh, double digit range. Right. I can finish with Vegas and. KH Lee, we just nutted it. Oh, wait, we're saving this for the Wednesday show, aren't we? My bad. Right. My bad. Okay. Good preview. Good teaser. We call that a teaser in the yep. biz. You got it. You, you nailed it there. Are we doing uh, Are we doing that live or are we going to pre-record it? That's I said, I don't know. We didn't talk about it, so we could talk about it now. We're off air. I don't care. People probably don't right. mind listening in, but we'll, we're going to do, do it live. We're going to do whatever the hell Pat wants us to do, right? Doesn't, That's does right. he? Does he? Uh, whatever Pat decides. We'll, we'll, we'll find out from today and we'll let you guys know. I don't think he cares, but I do think uh, we might even get like a, a cool thumbnail if we do it recorded because then right. I'll be able to edit it up, fix it in and do all that. So it probably will be recorded, but we'll do it early enough and get it out there as usual. So similar time that Pat and I would normally record, get that out to you guys. But also speaking of that, Pat's boy, you just scrolled past him. I think, but Pierce and Cootie cannot ah. do it as good as him. Won't try to be him doing that one. But just to note it, he is in the field as well. Wait, so, but his brother's more expensive. I yes. thought Pearson was the good one. So did I Parker's more what? though. Like way more, wasn't he? Like he was way up here. He's 6,500. It might be recent form. I think Parker showed a thing or two these, the last couple. Uh, what did he play? Uh, 25th at the Farmers for Parker. So that just automatically warrants him being more expensive now because one time recently he did better. Dude, Nicholas Echeverria is like an actual golfer, right? Yes. And yes. once again, I bet he speaks Spanish, so he's going to fill it home in Mexico. You got to run with the narratives. Got to. That, that's one you can run with. Yeah, he can make birdies at least, but maybe a better showdown play. I saw I saw Jorge Campillo up there, and I was going to say that narrative for him, but I think he speaks that Spanish Spanish and not that Mexican Spanish, and I've heard that like there's, there's going to be something lost in translation, so I think he's going to be tilting. Easy fade. Yeah, also uh, Pearson missed the cut at the Farmers. Parker made it and finished top 25. Boom, $1,000 price increase, just like that. 
Uh, ooh, Ben Taylor, 5,100. This is crazy to see guys this cheap. Like, this is so weird to me. Like, Ben Taylor's an actual golfer. Like, he's an actual golfer. I thought it was going to be Ben Martin, and then I wondered in my head if you told the Ben Martin baby story from Phoenix. <laughs> no, I, had, I didn't tell it. You should tell it. What were, were we on the 15th green there? Was that the, yeah, it was that par five, right? Yeah, so we were <laughs> over the green. Who was the leader at the time that we were thinking was going to show up? It was like, um, damn, I forget. Now, whoever was leading the tournament at that time, we're like, oh, man, it's his ball. So it's going to be right beside us, going to be on camera. Like, we'll get over here. We'll see this up. We're setting up just to hang out and be in that spot. And then they're like, no, 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 no. It was no, no. Nick, okay. Nick, he was in Nick Taylor's group. Yeah, they're, they're like, no, it's actually not him. It's uh, it's Ben Martin. We're like, all right, well, who cares? Let's watch a shot. You're betting, guys, like five to one odds on getting up and down and doing all this stuff. And anyway, we watch that. The next shot comes along the lines. Uh, that was the first one. Sorry, it was somebody else. That was Sam Stevens, actually. Ben Martin comes over in the next version. We're standing up on the hill, and a dad has his two-year-old there, and he's not even being bad. Like, I have a three-year-old boy. This kid was fine. Trust me. He was fine. You know, he's just wants to be up on his shoulders. All he did was lift him on his shoulders. And the caddy and Ben Martin are like, get the kid out of here, please. Move the kid. Move the kid. Everyone's like, oh, shit, that's a little aggressive. Obviously, they're pissed off. They went from the bunker, transferred to behind the green. Obviously, he flubs it. It's bad. It's up and I didn't flub it. Up and over, rolls out, misses the putt. And then I just yelled out, kid karma. And everyone started laughing and all the parents and everyone started making fun of this guy for the fact that he, he hates kids. And I think you yelled that out. You're like, Ben Martin hates kids or somebody yelled that and just hilarious. To he earned see, that bogey. He... he earned that bogey. That Don't tell me karma's not real. He earned that bogey on the 13th hole, which was easy as shit. Par five, a bogey. wasn't it? Yeah, it's yeah, so that par five. Par five. Yeah, he was so... the second easiest hole on the course, and he bogeyed it because he was an asshole to a kid. Don't mess with the kids, man. That's the issue. That You can't yeah. be doing that. And I get, like, I would get it if, like, the kid was being annoying. But, like, I, obje- I'm not even a person that likes little kids. And I would be have to be objective and say the kid was doing literally nothing wrong. Literally nothing wrong. Yeah, Nick did get a buyout there that didn't, you know, I think it worked in your favor, though, is the way it worked. He could have made more. But, uh, yeah, on that note, that was true. And then people were saying, well, how is he going to handle the 16th hole when he gets there shortly? Because if he can't handle this, it's not going to be very good over there. But, yeah, it was a fun event. Great time. And that was one of the stories. Are you telling that story because Ben Martin's in the field? Did I just scroll right over him? No, when I looked up Ben's, Ben Taylor came up and you just talked about Ben Taylor. And there is no Ben Martin. So, for future reference, we have to know. And, yeah, Sean remembers. JT, Justin Thomas, uh, speaking of Justin Thomas, wow, 40% chalk, see you bye. But uh, he was mean to Hoops Kid before and ended up missing the cut at that event as well. Like, it's just not good karma if you want to be be mean to the kids. All right, final thoughts on this field. First of all, do you like the dynamic pricing? Like, I, I think the more cool, clever things you can do to mix up the game and get people thinking and not just have everybody in the same cookie cutter process every week, I enjoy. Are you with me on that one? Been on it for a while. Yeah. I've been asking for this for a while. The one thing I'll take away again, it's their first time in a while doing it. I know we get it at the tour championships and things like that, playing a lot of PGA DFS. Just saying, I, I do think the dynamic needs to go more both ways. Again, like we all we, we always get golfers at 11 8 or whatever. So what's the difference in 12? If you're going to have the fives, let's make it 13,000 or 12 9 for Finau and really start getting some separation and some fun in there. But we'll take it as a stepping stone. Definitely love that. Like you said, from a perspective of playing the game getting different th- game theory, uh, you know, right. stuff that we can find angles of attack different. This is a good starting point. I love this. Are you buying my theory that they did this because the, the field is so gross that they know people aren't going to want to build a typical lineup. So now they're basically saying, Hey, go play one of these $5,000 assholes and you can still get five real golfers in your lineup, basically making it, you know, softer pricing without really changing the pricing. If you know what I mean? Yeah, I feel like that's something because it's you can only do so much when not everybody knows the people that we know in this field. And so this will at least make them feel like they can get five guys, burgers and fries that they like in their lineup. So I do think it's possible that that's the setup for it. Like at a major, you're talking about when the pricing is super soft, everybody can make a lineup of people they know and love and feel like it's the nuts. We already built the nuts on this show recently, but just to say it, you you can definitely build a lineup that you like the way this is set up. Over under female ownership, 37%. I had I said 38 earlier, so over, but I, I do feel like that's the early the early look here. Yeah, and even if I do end up projecting project doing ownership projections, because I'm a sweaty tryhard that does it, and he's let's say he's 33%. I almost guarantee you Wednesday night on the stream, I'll have him on the steam, right? Just like I told you that JT steam was coming last week. I projected him higher than everybody, and I still said he would be over 30% because people love a value and they love course history. And like you put those two things together, you just get you just get Wednesday night steam. 
And people are going to be like, wait, why am I playing these guys when I'm, I could just find the extra thousand dollars and play Fee now? Which to me, I, I don't think Fee now is playing that well. I think like he mentally is broken right now putting. Kind of like Sung Jay is just all around broken. I think Fee now is mentally broken at putting. That's just my take. Uh, okay. So anything else, Dambo? Nope. I feel like we covered it all. Like I said, we'll be back Wednesday. Anyway, we got extra shows this week. Hoop and I will be on tomorrow on this same channel. Like DJ said earlier, make sure you like subscribe to the channel and turn on the notifications. We'll be back tomorrow at 3 p.m. Eastern. That's 2 p.m. in the Lord's time zone that we'll be back on this channel. Hoop myself breaking it all down. We'll be back. I'll be tonight with Kenny Kim doing the fantasy golf degenerates podcast, catching up with him because I didn't get to chat with him after Phoenix last week. Shout out to my guy bear off for covering me there. And then we'll be back on Wednesday, you and I to record, you know, for the Mayo show. And then of course you've got your stream Wednesday nights that everybody knows and loves. I can't wait to see the video this week. Will, Brontosaurus last week just went off, just crushed, hole in one and everything. A uh, beautiful, majestic animal. Him. A beautiful, majestic animal. I told you we're going to make a lot of money on this one, and we did. Hey, uh, everybody, you've probably heard Tambo reference the Rosetta Stone numerous times. I do this for week long, round two, round three, and round four showdown. It's basically a, a study guide for everything you need to know leading up to the tournament or to the round of showdown that gives you all the relevant per pertinent information you need to know. Instead of going to these data sites and building these models of which you know nothing about, or instead of just going to data golf and just looking at these numbers and being like well what does that actually mean i break it down for you here after a week or two of using this thing it will become like the most intuitive thing you've ever read and you are going to be able to make wise informed decisions using it and you're like hey that does look cool i do want to check that out well let me tell you about a little place called shipping nation where me and tambo are not only owners but we are members and very happy ones you go right here to join the nation right and you go and you click on it and look we have all these packages and you remember that code i told you about earlier dgen 15 look at this that will apply to any one of these if you want to try it out for a week a month six months annual whatever you want to do 15 percent off of that which by the way 15 percent off of 5.99 that's not for golf that's for all the sports and by the way we did add a full year-long golf for 2.99 which you can apply that code to also right you just simply go to join today right because i know some of you are old you need me to wa walk you through this you come down here you do have a coupon and you put in d well hold on fat fingers dgen 15 and then boom look at that it's going to say uh your code has successfully been applied. And now it's only 509 for the entire year. And if you don't know, I am the sweatiest tryhard you'll ever meet at PGA, but we got a team full of sweaty tryhards. We have NFL, NBA, MLB, MMA, NHL, NASCAR, college football is coming. We have every every single major sport. And the fact that you can get all of those sports, not a single sport for 509 a year, all of them for the year and the Rosetta Stone and me and Tambo and Hoop and all of our incredible team at Ship and Nation. I don't know what the fuck you're waiting on, right? This is what DFS should be. It should be a place where you can build your own process, but you build it upon a foundation of great ownership, great projections, great tools like the Rosetta Stone. And when you do that and you have people around who can help you get better at the game, like me and Tambo and all of our great players that we have over in our community, this is what TFS is about. It is about being sustainable. It is about having fun. And it is about giving yourself enough time to break even until you finally hit that big one, where, which if you have your own process, you can do one day. I highly encourage you to go use this code DGEM15. And if you're one of those olds, it's like, I can't figure this shit out. I got you, bro. You simply reach out. By the way, we need to switch this editor because this is more about people switching over, but he will help you even over on the ship it site. We have an entire support group. Don't be afraid to ask. Uh, let's get to the drawing. Uh, the and winner already, is... Yeah, wait, wait. Yeah, yeah, did he do it already? He just told me he did it. There it is. The winner is Jordan. Jordan won. There you go. Oh, wait, did I unclick him? Jordan, you are the winner. Reach out to me. We will build a ticket in the main contest this week. What is it? $100,000 up top. I'd love to hit it. I still need to beat my $25,000 I split with Cody last year. Guys, don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, turn on the notifications. Tambo, do you have anything else before I get us out of here? Just the funny part. Did you see the meme that our guy Chad created in the Discord this week where they made me uh, Justin Timberlake, the guy, I forget who he plays, but in the movie Social Network, it was like, drop the Rosetta, just the stone. The stone. It's cleaner. Yeah, it's clear. Yeah, because it's exactly. we have the editor, we had the yeah. Degenerate 75. I was like, what's well, called the stone to yep. keep it? We don't want the trademarks and the copyright infringement of Rosetta. But I, I just thought that was one of the best memes I've seen across the merger so far. But yeah, last thing was just the merger it has been very successful. This collaboration, as Cody says, off to a great start. If you couldn't ask for, is this the right thing or the best thing or going to be a phenomenal thing moving forward? Uh, for a better weekend to start for owners, members, people in the J Discord, all over the place, everything to do with Ship Nation. Just an incredible first week. Love to see it. Do what DJ said. Go to the site if you want to get in. It's 
easy to sign up. There's tons of packages to get in and try it out. DGen15 is the code. We'd love to have you. Thank you guys all so much for the support. Lots more to come. Like we said, this is phase two of at least three phases. We're working on another big one that we'll be bringing to you guys hopefully sooner than later, but we'll keep that in mind. Keep it on the back burner as a spoiler. Another fun week doing the show with you, DJ. I love doing it. Awesome. Hey, guys, Wednesday night, 7 o'clock. That's in the Lord's time zone. Be there for the emergency stream. Go, start getting your juices flowing. Think about this week. Enjoy the process of building out, but don't commit to your lineups until you watch the stream Wednesday night. I will have all the last-second information you need to know to make well-informed decisions. 7 o'clock, of course, in the Lord's time zone. Be there. In the meantime, guys, we appreciate you being here, making this the most popular first-look show in all of the business. And, oh, yeah, don't forget Rule 3080. Expensive tout sites are shady. We'll see you guys later. Enjoy this outro.